do you have a bathroom drain tub that uh, no longer has the ability to have a plunger in it um, because it's kind of got rusted through. This video will help you uh, be able to install a new one pretty quickly and easily yourself. Here are the tools you're gonna need for this project. Um, I ended up getting a stopper and an overflow plate in one. Um, this is the stopper tool and uh, you can use that. Um, also, you can either choose to use a screwdriver to tighten, untighten, a one inch, uh, big old wrench, pliers, whatever you kind of want to use. Um, and I've also been told instead of even buying this tool, you can just simply slide these inside of there and uh, twist it. But um, I'm actually going to use the tool that was designed for it. You are going to need just a little bit of plumber's putty. Um, the O-ring is included in here, so you won't have to buy a separate O-ring. Um, if you are going to change the overflow plate, you may need a um, screwdriver, a pick. Um, it's always good to have gloves and some kind of paper towel as well, um, so you can clean up that area uh, pretty well. Um, you may also want a flat-headed screwdriver to clean out the extra plumber's putty um, you can also use the pick, uh, whatever you're comfortable with using. So we're going to go ahead and repair uh, this. We're actually going to take out the whole thing and put a new one in. And uh, you may think, how do I get the top piece out? Obviously, mine is not even in there. So there's a couple of different ways. As you are twisting it to the left, um, it should naturally come out. It has these little screw in here. Um, if not... Most of them also have another screw on the side that is Phillips and you can actually unscrew that and this little plunger piece does come out. So we're gonna work on getting this out and there's a couple of ways you can do that. Um, because mine is rusted, I actually do have the tool for it, uh, but I've read different places you can actually kind of just stick a pair of pliers in and turn them. Um, I did not want to play around, um, and so there are two different sizes for this one, and you can set it right down in there. And what you can do is you can take a huge one inch, um, you can also take a screwdriver and put it in and twist. Use these and uh, get it to the right setting. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the big one inch because this is really rusted. You can see the rust has kind of just destroyed it. And you can slowly start to see it beginning to move. This one is one of the harder ones. And I like to sometimes put a little bit of pressure on the top, which probably doesn't give you the best camera view but just so I don't strip anything. This is just plastic underneath. And it will slowly begin to get more and more loose. Again, with it as rusted as mine is, I would really encourage you probably not to just go with sticking either pliers or a wrench or ratchet or whatever you want down in there and twisting. Uh, just because most of this was all rusted out. And so you can kind of get a grip, gasp on how many times we're going to have to turn this. And it is not super easy, but it is very doable. And you can see that plumber's putty starting to come off. Right here, that's a good sign. These are the original one for this house. This house is about 17 years old. So things do start to kind of not look the best after that long. Again, I kind of mentioned you can use a screwdriver too. Um, obviously you don't have as much of leverage with that as you do if you got a big huge one. Or even this gives you a little more leverage to really kind of get in there. I 
again, it's a lot of twisting. I can't even move it by hand yet. I was hoping I'd be able to. Leverage can be your friend, and that's why a big old one inch wrench like this really kind of helped. I was hoping by now but it's still like I said pretty big so you just keep working at it so <clears throat> that is it right there as you can tell that was really nasty really rusty um, we're going to do our best to not let this fall in and clean that up. Um, one thing you may not be able to see right now, but as I begin to clean it up, you should begin to see there is a gasket. And so a pick works really well to kind of get that out. Probably can use a flathead screwdriver, something like that. And notice the location of this. Um, it would be really easy to think you just put this like O-ring gasket on top here and tighten down. That is not the case. We're gonna have to fish it down underneath here, which is not always the easiest thing to do, um, but it is doable. I just went over to my sink and put a little bit of soap, just hand soap and water to just begin to start cleaning this up just so we have the best seal we can possibly get. Um, sometimes this stuff is pretty, pretty good on there. Sometimes a flat head will help break some of that up. We just want the best seating we can get so we have no potential for leaks and stuff like that. Once you're pretty cleaned up there, you can also kind of clean up some of this nast with that same paper towel. Throw it away. Okay, the next thing you're going to want to do, again, you're not going to be reusing any of the old stuff, but the new one will have that new gasket. And so carefully take it off. You may need to spin it off so you're not tearing it or ripping it. That's when you do have to kind of get started over that lip. And then we should be able to just kind of spin it off there. Nope, just gonna pull off. Okay, so remember you're not just setting that there and tighten everything down. We've got to kind of put it where the old one was which is not super, super difficult, but you wanna make sure it's super lined up in the center there, just like that. And the other thing you might wanna do is just make sure you have the right size. Um, there's only one size at, I think I got this at Lowe's uh, for this, and it is the correct size, so that's a good thing. And so after we put that down in just a minute, you're gonna see it will take some effort to get that over. Next thing you're gonna do is get your putty. This is just plumber's putty. You don't need a lot of it. Um, if you haven't used it in a while, you may need to add some water to it, which I think is what I'm gonna have to do. So you may need to go to the sink and uh, make it pretty wet um, if you haven't used your putty in a while. And you're gonna kind of ball it up and roll it out. You're gonna roll it kind of thin. And if it splits like it kind of did here on the end, it's okay. If you have to ball it back up and roll it back out again if it doesn't want to take. But you just need a nice little bit right here and this will naturally press itself out as you kind of go around the lip there. Again, if it's not working itself like it did on mine, I'm not really pressing it down much. You can see I'm just making sure it's going to connect. 
put any leftover you have back inside. That stuff lasts for a very long time. Um, again, you might have to, uh, to put some water on it and make it happen. Next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna slowly put this in, make sure everything is lined up perfectly. And that O-ring sometimes becomes a bear to get down and on there, but it will work itself in. I like to do it by hand before you put any kind of tools in there. Make sure it's actually working. Sometimes you gotta put a little bit of extra force, but you're, you're not really putting a whole lot of pressure at this point. And it should catch on there with enough pressure. And then lightly use your tool. Now this is an interesting thing. The bigger side worked for this one. Same size for this one. It's not working. So I had to go to the smaller size on here. It's kind of the difference between brands. This was the only one that they had in stock in my area. So I just kind of went with it. And again, you see how slow I'm going. I'm gonna end up using the screwdriver method just to make sure we're nice and seated and I'm not over torquing anything, especially at the beginning. So you just kind of put a little pressure down on the top and spin it. And as all this is happening, you are getting everything to kind of line up, squeeze down with the tub between this. Remember, the tub's here where my index finger is. You have your gasket, and then you have the putty. And you're starting to see the putty come out just a little bit. It might be hard to see right here, but the putty is just beginning to come out the side. That is what you want to see. You're not seeing any putty yet. Um, after you're kind of down on it, that's a bad sign. You want to go ahead and pull it all back out and start back again. And now you're kind of seeing putty almost the whole way around coming out. And that's, a, again, a really good sign. You just keep spinning it. creating just a great seal, that's what you're wanting. Again, you can use this one inch or you can use some kind of other device. I think this one works really well because it just gives you lots of torque. Now you do want to be careful that this is all plastic. This one's actually metal, but this one is all plastic. Um, you do not want to strip this into the plastic by over tightening. And so you can also take your finger and kind of run it around and get all the excess off of the putty. And we're going to clean this all up nice and neat. You can also use a pick and get a little bit of it. Um, it will over time. And even a day or so after, it's sometimes good to come back and tighten down just another notch or two just to make sure you're good. stuff out of the bathtub pulling that out cleaning it off one more time again you can use a flathead kind of whatever you want there um, I'm just going to show you so you can see down in the hole a little bit when we put water down that it does exactly what it needs to do that's flowing down just like it should and then with this, you can actually put it down on. And begin to screw it in. I did have to kind of line that up so it worked properly. And so that allows water to go down. Once you tighten it, it begins to fill your tub up just like it should, and it holds the water, and you can let it out as needed. 
I hope that helped you guys uh, with that portion. We're still gonna do right up here um, and go ahead and get that, go ahead and get that changed out because again, it was part of that two pack. And this is a really, really easy fix for that overflow plate. Um, so I'll show you how to do that next. So for this overflow plate, you're gonna take a flathead screwdriver and you literally just start unscrewing. The only reason I'm doing this is because it came together and this one looks pretty gross. Hands are kind of wet from before, so the screwdriver just slipped right on out. Nope, I thought it'd be loose enough. And this one does say it does work for a two or three. Um, and so that seal is not very good on there for an overflow. I'm gonna try to push that down in there just a little bit. There it goes. Make sure that's seated correctly. And because this is all nasty and grody, I'm gonna take some time to clean up this real quick. Again, you just take some paper towels, some soapy water. Normally works pretty well. Whenever you're in there cleaning, always try to clean up as you go. Just makes the end better. Sometimes you gotta take a little flathead screwdriver and just lightly get some of that extra corrosion off of there. Okay. So they ended up providing this as well in that bag. So they do get a new screw. And I love that it's a Phillips screw instead of a flathead because they're a lot easier to work with. And so we'll be putting that one on. This drain piece needs to be down here. So if you're looking at it, this piece goes on the bottom. And that allows as water comes up to potentially, um, hopefully you never overflow, but it kind of just becomes a second drain if you begin to start to overflow. Now this is kind of the hard thing. This thing will spin on you, so you want to make sure you are where you need to be and kind of hold it on there or else it will spin around. So, And you can also kind of feel the hole on the bottom side. There we go. That's right where I want it. And that is just hand tight on there. You do not need to overdo that. And that is it. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching.